one time, uh, I th- was it last year? I think it was about last year. I was going on one of my lecture tours. And when I go on my lecture tour, like what I'm doing now, I try to fast or I try to, you know, eat right so I can have the stamina to, you know, do a two hour lecture and, and travel and do radio interviews. So you, you got to have stamina, you know, to go on the road and speak. People think that it looks easier than what it is, but you got to have some kind of stamina to be on stage talking nonstop for a couple of hours and traveling. So I try to get it right. I try to get my mind right. I try to get my diet right. And a couple of years ago, I was on about to go on tour. I think I was in the middle of the tour and I, I just came home for like a weekend or something. But I know I was on tour and I'm trying to eat right. And I'm not trying to eat any sugar. I was trying to cut sugar out because, you know, I, I like sugar. I get sugar. I become addicted to it. So I'm trying to, I, I'm cutting it out of my diet at this point. And I'm out running errands out here in LA. And I go to the ATM and I'm walking back to my car from the ATM and there's a C's candy. There's a store called C's candy. Now I don't know if C's candy is around other places, but in, in the California area, there's this, it's a candy store. They sell chocolates and all types of other little candy, but they, they specialize in these homemade type chocolates. Very good candy. Now I'm not, you know, I, I can eat chocolate every blue moon. I'm not tripping on no damn chocolate because you know, if I eat too much chocolate, that should have break me out. And, you know, I don't want to eat too much chocolate. But I passed C's Candy and they had a poster of peanut brittle. Now, the thing is, peanut brittle is my shit. I fucks with peanut brittle. Everybody has their form of crack. My crack is peanut brittle. I love peanut brittle. As a kid, I fuck with peanut brittle. So they got this big poster of peanut brittle. I'm like, damn, C's Candy has peanut brittle? Now I'm I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to eat no peanut brittle because I'm not eating no sugar. I'm eating right. I'm going on the road. No sugar for me. No sugar. I'm not going to break my sugar diet. No sugar at all for me. But let me go in here and holler at him about this peanut brittle for later on, though. You know, it ain't going to hurt for me to go in here and talk because I'm, I'm intrigued that C's Candy has peanut brittle. So I walk into C's Candy and C's Candy is a very deceptive place because it's all wholesome. It's like all white. It looks almost like a, like a, a, a hospital or a, a church or something. The way it's set up it's, it has a real homemade vibe to it. And the people there are extra friendly. They got like these white women in there. Hello. Hello, you. Hello. How can I help you? It's very nice, very sweet, very nurturing. So that's deceptive right there. They lure you in. So I go in here asking about the peanut brittle. I'm like, hey, I didn't know C's had peanut brittle. They're like, yeah, we have peanut brittle. Would you like to buy some? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just asking. I might get some later on. I can't eat any peanut brittle right now because I'm I'm not trying to, you know, I can't eat sugar right now. And the lady behind the counter was like, well, you know, we do have sugar-free peanut brittle. I said, what? Oh, my eyes lit up. Curiosity killed the fucking cat. When she said that, I'm like, can you tell me more? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got sugar-free peanut brittle. Would you like a sample? I was like, yes, ma'am. Let me taste that. And I'm thinking, okay, let me taste this. They didn't mix some bullshit together it's gonna taste fucked up or whatever so she gave me a little sample of the sugar-free peanut brittle i ate the sugar-free peanut brittle sample that shit was delicious i mean it just melted in my mouth oh it was delicious i said this is sugar-free she said yeah this is sugar-free i said how much is it? Well, you can get a box of it for ten dollars. I said, give me two boxes of them bitches. 
So I get two boxes, two big ass boxes of the sugar-free peanut brittle. So I go to my car and I got the, the sugar-free peanut brittle taste in my mouth already. So I crack open one box and I'm like, okay, let me, I'm just going to eat one. Just going to eat one peanut brittle and I'm going to save it. I'll save this and just eat it throughout the weekend. I'll save it. So I'm driving home. And I eat one of the, the, the sugar-free peanut brittles. But the thing is, when you're addicted to something, when, you, when, you, when something is your crack, you can't eat just one. Just like those potato chips, they say you just can't eat one. And I tried to eat one, and I closed the box, and I'm driving, and I put the box out of sight. But that shit was calling me. You know how crackheads be saying the shit be calling them? That shit was calling me. It was like, come on, player, you know you want more than one of us. Crack this bitch right back open and get another one of us. So I'm driving and I crack the box open. I eat another one. I'm like, okay, you know how you, you, you do shit and you make deals with yourself? Like, okay, just these last two pieces of peanut brittle, I'm not going to eat no more. That's it. I'm, I'm, okay, one more peanut brittle and that's it. I keep making these little bullshit deals with myself. I did this for about 15, 20 minutes. Ultimately, within a 20 minute time span, I ate both fucking boxes of the peanut brittle. I ravaged them shits. I tore them boxes up. And so I ain't got no more peanut brittle now. I, in 20 minutes, two big ass boxes of peanut brittle. I gorged myself because I'm thinking, I'm like, well shit, the, you know, the, the devil and the angel is on your shoulder. The angel is like, oh, no, no, save some for later. And the devil is like, come on, man, it's sugar-free. You can eat as much as you want, Flex. Come on, dude. It's sugar-free. I'm like, yeah, angel, it's sugar-free. I can eat as much as I want. It's it's delicious and it's good for you. And I'm, I tore them shits up. It's all gone. And I'm just saying, I'm on a sugar-free peanut brittle high right now. I'm buzzing. I'm like, God damn, that was some delicious shit. And I don't think I didn't struck gold. I'm like, oh man, I didn't came up on some delicious peanut brittle that's good for you. Boy, the Lord bestows his blessings sure when you need them. I'm really feeling good about myself. I'm driving, I'm buzzing. I'm just on a sugar high. Uh, you know how you eat something so good you just can't stop thinking about it? I'm just in my mind having a little party, still thinking about how good those two big-ass boxes of peanut brittle I just glutton myself into. I'm just thinking about how good it is. I can't even enjoy my drive. I'm still thinking about it. So I'm driving. I'm like, man, how did they make the peanut brittle so damn good? So I'm look, I get the box. I'm going to look at the box and look up the ingredients. I'm like, because that tasted regular. It didn't have no bitter aftertaste because a lot of stuff that says sugar-free, there's a, an aftertaste or something. But this it was normal. It was delicious. So I'm like, let me read the ingredients on this shit. So I read the ingredients. It was like, okay, peanut butter, um, flour, polysorbate, this, polysorbate, that, food coloring, this, blah, blah, blah. Then there was some word that looked very unfamiliar. It said maltitol. And there was a, an asterisk by the word maltitol. Okay, maltitol. I said, okay, maltitol. That, that, that must be what they're using to make it, you know, taste good. That must be the sugar replacement. But the thing is, the word maltitol, there was a star by uh, an asterisk meaning that you need to read more, read further on down the box. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, what is this asterisk there for? And the thing is, y'all have to understand what the word free is. See, it said it's sugar free, but ain't nothing in life for free. You gonna pay one way or another. And the thing is, I read the warning on the box. So I read further on down on the box. It said, warning. Maltitol, when consumed in large doses, is known to have a laxative effect. I'm like, okay, 
Um. Okay. Okay. A laxative effect, huh? and I'm like, I just ate two boxes of these shits. Now you have to understand, maltitol. If you eat a little bit of maltitol, that shit tears your stomach up. You understand what I'm saying? Because they have little butter cookies and stuff like that. If you eat like one little butter cookie, it will tear your stomach up. It, it's sugar free, but the maltitol, the side effect is that it has a lax laxative effect. It will fuck your stomach up. Laxative effect is an understatement. I learned this later on, but the thing is now I just realized that I just basically ate two big fucking boxes of laxatives and I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, well shit, well tomorrow I got to, you know, kind of chill out and kick it at the house when this thing kicks in, but tomorrow would never come. Oh, that was wishful thinking. As soon as I thought that. I got that, I got a, that bubble in my stomach. I'm driving. I got that big cramp in my stomach where I can literally feel my bowels liquefying. I'm like, oh shit. Here we go. When y'all, you, you know that feeling. And it, it felt like Jaws coming. It felt like a shark. You know, the, that you start hearing that Jaws music when your stomach start bubbling. I felt that. I'm like, oh, shit. It's coming. And I'm on the freeway. I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles at 530 on the 405 freeway heading north. And that bubble is kicking in. Nigga, Jaws was coming. And I'm like, oh, shit, man. I got to make it to the crib. And I keep having to clench myself. And, and it was coming heavy. And it feels like you got to pass gas, but you know if you pass gas, you're going to pass ass. So I felt that bubble, and I'm trying to hold in that bubble. And, man, I start getting nervous, and I'm, I'm like, fuck, man, I got I to gotta get this evil spirit up off me. That shit felt like Satan all up in my soul, man. I'm like, let me put on some damn gospel music or something, man. I start putting on the gospel channel, man. I said, shit, let me, let me pray this off me. I put on some BB and CC whinings. I'm like, oh man, bloop, bloop, bloop. Now, the bubbles are going and I'm trying to drive slow, trying to pray some of that, that spirit up off me. Then I try to speed up a little bit to make it to the crib. I'm like weaving through traffic. I'm driving through the center of, I'm, I'm doing all types of night rider type shit to get to the crib. And it's getting more and more serious that, that the jaws is bubbling. It's still bubbling on me. And I'm trying to think of positive things. And I just called to the house to warn motherfuckers. I'm like, Mission Impossible. I'm like, hey, it's me. Open the door, open the bathroom, give me an incense and a magazine and a lighter. Don't ask questions. Just do it now. I'm barking out instructions and shit. I'm driving home, man, and I'm like, you know when it's about to go down when you go home. I'm already in the car unbuttoning my clothes. Because it's going to go down when I get in the house. And I'm like, oh, God damn you, C's candy. Damn you, peanut brittle. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting close. You know, when you get close to your house, when you know some shit is about to go down, the bowel movement gets more intense because psychologically you know it's time to release so the closer you get to your house the more intense it get that's the that's when you got to clinch up more so i'm trying to pray that spirit down off me man so i put on some more gospel music i put on some kurt franklin on their ass i'm like oh god oh god walk away satan walk away satan i rebuke thee stay away from my bowel satan Get your spirit off my colon, Satan. I rebuke thee. So, man, I finally get to the crib. And you know how when you get home and you go, you got to go to the bathroom. You get your, you take your shoes and your shirt off. I got butt fucking naked. I went in the bathroom and I gave my spirit and my soul to the commode. It went down. 
I gave it up. And the thing is, man, it went on for just days. It was just a nonstop thing, man. And you know how you they say you go to the bathroom, you feel 10 pounds lighter. Nigga, I lost so much weight, I got off the toilet looking like Trey Songs. I was bony as hell. That's why when I was on on my lectures, I look real slim. That's because of them them damn sugar-free peanut brittles got off in my ass. That's why I look so damn slim. And the lesson I learned is that no nothing when you overindulge in it is good for you. No matter how good you think it is for you, there's nothing free. There's always a price to pay. There's always going to be a detriment to something that you overindulge in. And I had to learn that shit the hard way. And that's today's lesson of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. 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 Radio Show.